this looks like his first ever run in this triple trouble machine. And he's looking pretty strong. You got it? Yeah, he's yeah. got it. Just enough to get it past that full pull line. Boy, it's Keith Black heavy put out power. Now we'll move on to Randy Petro. Multi-chaos out of Camden, Ohio. Another Keith Black combination, but interesting. Petro runs four Keith Blacks, but then combines it with a Chevy-based airy engine. Let's see how it goes. My tractor's got some power. What a great run. It is a full pull for Randy Petro. I thought he was taking that thing right out of the dome. Wow. Exactly. Now Steve Klingenberg, bad habit. The name of that tractor out of Holland, Michigan. Long time veteran, loves those big block Chevys. He's running five 526 Chevrolets to provide the power. Target. How about that for power? Another full pull. You're going to see the blower belt come off right there. Tough break for Steve Klingenberg. See, the top motor got a little bit lean there. We, we wanted to make the gate, so we took some feel away from the motor. Makes a little more power. Well, we went a little bit too far in the adjustment. It detonates. It detonates the belt off. So we'll go put a new belt on, check it out. We'll come back and run again. Next up, David Richardson of Kodiak Tractor, very famous tractor, and uh, we'll try to see what the guy from Kentucky can do here. Needs 300 feet to get in the pull-off. Here he goes. Oh, he's just a hair short. Man, I mean, he is. Oh. Three feet short. Wow. Well, that's tough. On the test pull today, during the day, we messed the crank up. We had to go out and change a hub on the front of one of the motors. We broke two lower belts, so we have not stopped since we had to make the test pull. How do you feel about your run here tonight? It was pretty good for a half throttle run. I just yeah. didn't want to break anything and make you know try to make a good show and try to stay in the top of the points. Tough break for David Richardson, and here are standings. And here's who you're going to have in the pull-off. The Predator and Doug Downs coming back. Triple trouble, multi-chaos, bad habits, all putting down full pulls. They've still got a lot to go to settle who's going to win it here in Houston on Motor Madness. And we'll check with that pull-off in just a little while. Right now, down memory lane we go. You remember back in New Orleans last year, a year ago, freestyle competition. We want to show you this uh, run by Gravedigger. It was something, wasn't it? It was something indeed. It was also a real significant point in the season. If you'll remember last year on Motor Madness, here in the early portion of the season, Dennis Anderson had gotten in a really bad groove. Gunslinger was actually dominating the circuit. Dennis was flipping him over more than, the, than anything else. And he finally started getting things back together. Wanted to put on a great freestyle run for these fans here. They had humid conditions. Mike's place, the, the play was really tacky. And don't forget there's that yellow barrier right in the center that was sitting there for the unlimited dragster tractors. So in this freestyle that had the fans on their feet in New Orleans, Dennis Anderson ends up capping it off in true Gravedigger style. Oh. That is a Gravedigger freestyle run. Incredible. Again, you can see the way he comes over the car sideways and I knew he knew it was there, but he didn't see how quick it was going to come up on him. Once he hit that barrier, there was nowhere for him to go but nose first. Wow. He hit hard. And that was just the beginning of Dennis Anderson's injury problems, his bad back of a year ago. Still to come on Monster Madness. Pro Stadium trucks will be running, and we're going to show you some great crashes. of. You're watching it on TV, but you... Back in Seattle a year ago where they had quite a show there. We had some great off-road action and look at this. That is Grave Digger without a lot of sheet metal on it. Dennis Anderson brought Grave Digger number eight to Seattle, determined that he was going to put this thing on his lid and he almost got it right there. This was the basement going to retire this truck in style and he flat put on a freestyle show. Look, the tire is blown, he's still going people in Seattle are never going to forget this run from the only man 
who can get this crazy, Dennis Anderson. Grave Digger knows how to freestyle, particularly Dennis Anderson. Hey, let's go to our What's That All About feature. We're going to tell you about planetary axles. A planetary axle is, is a is something pretty unique to monster trucks as far as use underneath the truck. To go fast is what you got to have. A planetary axle system is better than the old ones that we used to run the regular militaries. When we first started monster trucking, we ran dry shafts like a semi truck. And God, you tore them up all the time because the dry shaft was making all the leverage for the truck to move. We actually made it up with a planetary unit, which is a three to one gear reduction hub that gives these monster trucks all the strength at the rear end housing. Which actually takes the load off the center sections of the axles. Uh, the reason for gear reduction wise, for better power, better takeoff, for racing, uh, they're a lot stronger built. Okay, you get that? This is the main hub here. Um, a big hunk of iron there. And that these three gears here rotate inside the main gear, and you have a drive gear here. But these things here take all the leverage, the reduction that we get off the end, takes all the leverage off the ring and pinion. These things here is what made monster trucks what they are. I got it. Got it.